My name is Pablo Quiroga. I'm the director of product management for IT asset management at Qualys. And I'm going to present a global IT asset inventory and a two-way synchronization with uh, ServiceNow CMDB. So the agenda today, very short, challenges. Uh, why we need global IT asset inventory is a great question. Some use cases, uh, demo, and a little bit about our roadmap. Uh, of course, Q&A. At the end. Um, so let's start with the challenges. So as we know, modern IT environment today is hybrid. It's a reality. Multi-clouds, uh, on-premise, uh, IT, operational technology, the, the line, line between them blurring even more. Uh, IoT being introduced as part of our digital transformation. Uh, workstations, people working from home, from the cafe. Mobile workforce, the use of uh, mobile devices. Uh, for your digital transformation as well. So as uh, IT and security, we have to manage and protect all of this environment. Um, so let's look at some of the common challenges today. So the first one is the lack of co cohesive visibility across these different environments. Um, there are many uh, disparate tools, point solutions, um, trying to provide a partial visibility into different aspects of this uh, hybrid environment. And the issue is the gap between these, uh, these solutions. So that will be your, your, your biggest blind spot. The stuff that you don't know, you're, you're not tracking between these tools. Um, and also, there's lots of inefficiency trying to bring these tools together. So you have your, your, your um, uh, client agents, you have your server agents, different tools. And to bring all of that together, uh, typically, you have uh, organizations pulling the data into Excel or their ETL and trying to massage the data, clean up, filter. So a lot of time is wasted just crunching data and not really making business decisions. Um, <clears throat> but if we uh, drill even deeper on why you know this is challenging, it's really the nature of IT as a data. So, IT asset data, and these are the typical uh, three Vs of big data. Um, it, it, it has high volume, okay? So across this hybrid environment, you have lots of, lots of assets, configuration, services, processes, open ports, service, uh, software that is continuously changing on your environment. So... Can you... Thanks, Harry. Is it better? Can you help me with that? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, I'll speak louder. Okay. Um, so, second issue is the velocity, right? So, all of this data is coming at a high velocity. And in order for you to be able to process that at speed, you really, really need, uh, you know, compute power and you need... Uh, um, a, a platform behind that so you can uh, process all of this data at speed. But the biggest, the biggest challenge really is um, the, the variance of data. So, and this is the nature, how IT works. Organizations uh, ship their uh, you know, different versions of software, different teams working on the same product. They introduce different brands, different names, different executables, DLLs, and it, it complicates everything, right? So there's acquisitions happening every week, sometimes every day, and uh, uh, products get rebranded. Um, so how do you keep track of all of that uh, lineage, right? And then if you look at the typical environment, you will see a manufacturer when you uh, incorporate these acquisitions that I'm talking about, you will see a manufacturer being represented in eight different ways. For example, Microsoft, Microsoft Corporation, and all of its acquisitions. So when you have a contract or when you're trying to assess your vendor, you just want to say, show me everything about Microsoft or Oracle. You want to understand everything else that was acquired by them, okay? Uh, a product is even worse. So a product can be represented in 20 different ways in your environment. So, um, so why global IT asset inventory? So if you really go uh, and understand um, the impact of, uh, of a good IT asset management data set, it's across your entire organization. So 
Today we're thinking about security, but it really has impact to your procurement planning, financial planning, strategic projects like uh, enterprise architecture planning, um, uh, your service desk automation, some efficiency. So for all of that, really harnessing a good IT asset inventory and not only different databases, but a database, single data source that you can use across these different teams, use across these different projects so that it can all share the same data source is very powerful. Of course, they all need different use cases from the data. They need to look at it in different uh, aggregate at different levels and extract different data, but they can all share the same visibility. So, so this is why it's very important to, to build this um, um, single uh, source of truth for, for your organization. <clears throat> So let's, let's drill into some specific use cases, right? So visibility, as you know, you cannot manage or protect what you don't know. So that's the basic uh, uh, requirement. Uh, when you think about compliance, uh, so internal audits, external audits, uh, they all, you need to know what are you, all your assets, who, are using, who is using your assets, and how they're using your assets, right? So any, any framework, the top requirements, you know, these are the top requirements. Uh, so for security best practices, some use cases, identifying unauthorized software, right? So this is the next one. So how can you uh, identify unauthorized software if you can't really like organize your, your inventory that is changing all the time? Um, you would be like trying to make lists all day basically of what is unauthorized or authorized, right? So if everything is not organized. Um, and then ensuring that software is up to date. Like, okay, I have a software this, uh, that is end of life. Uh, how many versions behind is it running versus the latest version, right? And then for software asset management, um, understanding what is owned versus what is deployed versus what is actually being used, right? So if something is not used, you can uh, reclaim licenses, you can save money, uh, but you can also reduce risk because you're not trying to patch something that is not used. Um, so that is a huge, uh, you know, use case and benefit. And enterprise architecture, so understanding the end of life of software and, uh, of, and components of your business applications. So if something is getting end of life, great, I, see, I have visibility, but if I'm going to replace it or upgrade, what is the impact that is going to, to be across your, my business applications? Right? So these are questions that are being asked from different directions, from security, but also from IT. And they're trying to solve the same, the same point at the end, which is uh, make sure that uh, you enable your users to be productive and secure. Right? Um, so introducing Qualys Asset Inventory. So Qualys Asset Inventory is the single source of truth for IT and security teams managing assets in hybrid environments. And these four things, it gives you a complete, continuous, structured, and enriched asset inventory that enables better business decisions. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about, so you know we've been talking about uh, complete and, co and continuous uh, asset um, uh, telemetry collection. Uh, we, you've seen this uh, throughout the day yesterday, and uh, you're gonna see more today too. Um, but I want to spend a little bit more time on what we mean by structured and, and, and rich asset inventory. Um, so after we collect uh, data today with all of our different sensors, um, the, the asset information is normalized, which means I have a single uh, name for Microsoft. I have a single name for Oracle. I have a single name for Office. So that, that, is, that means it's normalized. And then it's structured in a hierarchical, uh, hierarchical um, um, category. And then categorized for hardware and software. And then this is enriched with metadata that is non-discoverable metadata that our team is, so we have a dedicated team that is doing research and curation of data. So based on a priority and a process that we have uh, behind, we have a tier, a manufacturer tiers that we we uh, categorize and prioritize, and we research everything about these manufacturers and these products. So as soon as something is uh, end of life, we trigger a research, we curate the data, 
and we make sure we keep, keep, uh, keep it up to date. So that we have a specific team that is dedicated to this uh, um, technology catalog research and curation. And, and that gives this you know, rich asset metadata around your inventory. So things that are not discovered by the discovery tool or the sensor, but it, that are uh, part of our research. And then we, of course, we, we index this for two second visibility on our UI. You can use that board, dashboards, but you can also do a two way CMDB synchronization, which means we can pull assets that you created as part of your internal life cycle from your CMDB to, um, um, to Qualys and then trigger scan. And then you can also uh, push back this rich data set to your CMDB. So the holy grail of CMDB is I want a complete, continuous, categorized, clean data on my CMDB. This is what everyone that is building a CMDB really wants. Um, so as I mentioned, so everything starts with our sensors, right? So at Qualys, we are, uh, are a scalable self updating and centrally managed sensors, which means that you don't have to, as you know, I mean, everything gets managed from the cloud and you get, up, uh, um, you can update all of these different sensors. So our uh, scanner technology, so which is active probing, um, comes in different form factors, uh, physical scanner, virtual scanner, or even a certified uh, scanner for uh, commercial clouds. And then our lightweight cloud agent, supporting multiple technologies, Linux, um, uh, Windows, Mac, AX. Um, it's really, um, you can get inventory, and then once you enable the, the, the agent, you can start getting more telemetry for indications of compromise, uh, vulnerability management, policy compliance, etc. So the same agent is delivering multiple solutions, right? Um, and then passive scanning, a passive uh, network sensor, which is uh, in beta today, um, it really is um, consuming uh, network traffic and just analyzing this network traffic to uh, do discovery and profiling of the devices and also enriching um, our, our telemetry from the network perspective. And then we also use APIs, as I mentioned, to uh, pull data, for example, from a CMDB or uh, public cloud connectors to get accounts from uh, account, uh, account ID from uh, cloud. They're also working to extend that into infrastructure logs and also some things like Active Directory. I'll uh, speak a little bit more about that on the next slides. So basically, we, we provide all of the different uh, capabilities from collection perspective, agentless, agent-based, passive. And, and we do that because we think that you really need to have these different sensors, look at your environment in multi-dimensional, so you can look at your assets from internal, from external, what they're doing in the network, and that really gives you the full picture of you know, what are your assets, how they're interacting, interacting with each other. Um, a little bit more about the, the use case of uh, so passive network sensor, which is in, in, in beta. Uh, so this sensor, as our other sensors, is going to be a multi-function sensor. So it's going to collect data for different applications. And the first application is asset inventory. So the first application is discovering devices and profiling them. So not just give me an IP address on Mac, but tell me more about these assets. What is the model? What is the operating system? Uh, what are the open ports? So if you have a scanner, for example, that is scanning a weekly, but you want to detect any new open port in between those scans, this sensor is detecting this use, usage of these ports in real time and, and communicating and enriching um, so this is what I mean by enriching your existing inventory, right? So it's ex uh, enriching that inventory and also with um, uh, a traffic uh, analysis, so to tell you uh, what the devices are doing. And then this extends also our capability of discovery for sensitive systems that may not be suited for active probing. So things like medical devices, uh, uh, industrial control systems, SCADA, these things typically you want to do first passive scanning, understand what they are before you're launching, you know, a scan, uh, a control scan. Okay. Um. <coughs> so let me explain um, a bit more about. Uh, Let me explain what, a bit more what we, 
um, mean by normalization? Because this is a, um, uh, something new, really. Like we've been collecting data with asset view. You can index your data as it comes, your discovery data is indexed, and you get access to your fingerprints uh, to search them. But now we're doing this analysis on top of this data, right? We're adding this value here. So if you, do have an, uh, if you look at this example, right, I have my raw discovery data, which by the way, like any discovery tool that is uh, executing commands, doing a WMI, anything will return this data because this is the IT data. That's the nature of IT data I was talking about. So in many ways, this information is cryptic, and I'm just put it here easy so we can understand. But what normalization means is we find a single value for every uh, of these attributes, right? And then we create uh, this hierarchical structure where you would see what is the original manufacturer, what is the current owner uh, of, of that uh, manufacturer, um, and then what is the product, the market version, the edition. This is just an example, but we don't stop there. We have the internal version, the update, the service pack, all of the, that that gets decomposed in different attributes so that now we can um, so I'm IT, I want to look at my, uh, or software as, uh, asset manager, I want to look at my uh, Adobe from 7 to 10 because I have a contract that I can do upgrade, downgrade. Great, I can aggregate at the product level and I can say from se uh, market version 7 to 10. I don't have to say version 10.1.2.3 and this and that. But uh, security may need to explore in that list and see the specific service pack, the specific build. So we don't. We have. We provide all of that. Um, so as you can see, operating system, hardware, software, example. Um, now you can really understand Hyperion solutions, Oracle, Hyperion capital planning, uh, market version six, professional. Okay, and then we add this uh, level of metadata I was referring to. So we add this uh, functional two-level functional taxonomy for every hardware operating system and software. So you can say, show me my um, uh, server operating system, or show me my servers, or show me my uh, finance applications. Okay, And then on top of that, we have additional metadata, um, things like uh, life, uh, vendor lifecycle data. So when the product was GA, when the product is end of life, when the product is end of service, which means no more security patches. So these attributes are augmenting and enriching my inventory automatically. License type, open source versus commercial. So let's do a quick demo. Can you see that? Okay. So we start with global IT visibility, right? So in this example, I'm using a uh, scanner, cloud agent, and I'll show you also passive, passive network sensor. Um, data is being uh, aggregated, correlated, and then enriched here. So the first thing is I want to see is the category breakdown. Right? So I can see computers, virtualized networking, even surveillance cameras, right? So now everything has been automatically Categorize. I no longer have to do my own tagging and go and pick this is my asset, this is the IP address, this is a camera. This is out of the box classification. So, for example, I can drill into my notebooks and see the distribution of them. So now I can say at the, at the hardware level, let's look at my different products, right? So I have the Novo Apple Asus, Asus um, brands and I have different products. I can expand that and go to the next level. Specific models, and let's say we pick Apple. So now we can get the specific model, how many, uh, you know, when it was released, uh, how many Thunderbolts, etc. So these are the different models. And now I can get this same set and say, now I'm going to pivot on operating system, right? So for operating system, I want to see at the market version. So not the internal version 10.3, 10, but I want to see the market version. I agree with that. Hi, Sierra, Mojave, El Capitan, Sierra, Yosemite. So now I came from you know, all my environment. I'm able to classify uh, computers, notebooks, go into Apple, pick a specific set of uh, 
uh, a model, for example, and then do a pivot on the operating system and understand, okay, these are my, uh, you know, for example, operating systems that haven't updated. Okay, so you can come from high to uh, specific very, very, um, very easily. So if we go to software, <clears throat> the first one I want to show is we have a, a, this software type uh, layer, which is the first layer. And this is the, the huge value that we're adding here is if you look at your environment today, uh, software, I'm going to show you a few examples, right? So you have utilities, device drivers, updates, installers, uninstallers, plugins, uh, things that come with the operating system, firmware, hotfixes. So all of that is part of this sea of data, right? Um, so if I'm looking for applications, how am I going to do that if I export this to Excel and then trying to find every single one of them? So as you can see, if I select all of these different software, which is the original list, now we are like four times higher, that number, right? So out of the box, you can say, okay, let me focus really on my applications. So now I have reduced my volume of data to my applications, and now on top of that, I have a two-level taxonomy where I can say, for example, productivity, and then I can see inside and say, okay, I have email, office suites, Word, presentation, spreadsheet, let me uh, choose office suites across any any vendor on my environment, okay? So let's focus on Microsoft. <clears throat> so Microsoft, I have many versions, many specific editions, many um, builds, and I notice this end of life here. So let me pull up this uh, faceted search. So show me end, any end of life uh, office on, on my environment, and now I can see, right, very specific, specifically the minor version, the edition, but I can say, let me just do a dashboard or focus on my market versions, right? So now I have three market versions. I know 2010, I have 194 installations. It's end of life. Uh, you can quickly drill down into those assets. Um, some of them will have multiple installations. So what we're counting here is the instance, right? So if you have a database, for example, you can have multiple installations of the database. So, and then from there you can say operating system, for example, market version. So now I, I have identified 106 Windows 7 uh, laptops on my environment running end of life Office 2010 right away. So I can create my dashboard, my KPI, track that. I'm doing an, a refresh, I'm doing an upgrade. I can now start tracking that, that progress. Um, so if we go back to to the dashboard, right? I can categorize my operating system, look at the different variations of my environment. I can categorize my, my uh, software, client applications versus server applications. <coughs> now I can look at my databases, commercials versus open source. So all of that is categorized out of the box. And then I can start doing thing, things more specific, end of life client operating systems, for example or uh, all assets with end-of-life software. Across my environment, show me everything, the state. So how many are, uh, so, uh, software installations are generally available? So in the current supported version versus end-of-life already versus end-of-service. And then interesting use case, I want to see on my environment end-of-life endpoint protection software. So I have 106 uh, installations of malware bytes across different uh, versions that are end of life. So that's, I need to take an action on this. Um, so now let's look at the, um, on the same inventory, so what's happening is we're using um, On the same inventory, we're using passive network sensor. And what, what is it doing? It's uh, as soon as it finds an asset that you already have on your managed uh, inventory, it maps that and it knows, so it'll only enrich that asset, 
Okay, but anything else that you didn't have on your scans or you didn't have on with Cloud Agent, it'll put it in this bucket called unmanaged assets. Right, so in this example, we are uh, tapping also a Wi-Fi uh, in the office, uh, the guest network, the Wi-Fi, everything. So you'll see a lot of uh, uh, employee-owned devices, for example. Uh, but also things that we were missing on our inventory, such as the tablets that we use on our conference room to, for, uh, to reserve the room, for example. So now you can look at the same data. It's coming from a different sensor, and it's very different data from network perspective. But it's get, getting categorized, normalized in real time as well. So I can do the same thing with my um, passive network uh, data, data from the sensor. I can say, look at my hardware by product, for example. So I can look at very specifically, you know, what, what are my different brands, different models. If I uh, drill down into Samsung, I can go and say, now expand on the different specific model. Okay, so the same uh, accuracy and the same uh, um, structure of data you can, uh, you can get from from a passive uh, sensor. So now let's look at um, let's look at one example. So I, I see Windows devices. So most of these Windows devices that are mostly laptops should have an agent that should have been scanned on my environment. So let me drill into that. Let me pull up this one and say you can also leverage some of the uh, port services and traffic uh, information. For example, I'm going to leverage this token service. BitTorrent. So I find this asset. What is this asset? IP address. Okay, yeah. We, um, so I can search. And I, I can understand my traffic. So. I can look at this and I can say, okay, what, what are all the transfer type of traffic on, on this asset? So you, you came from not knowing, uh, feeling that blind, and even understanding what this device is doing on your environment. Uh, quickly, I just want to uh, jump into a couple more, more examples. So, um, so this is an example of an asset that has been picked up by cloud agent, so you will have the the agent uh, information, all of the software installation and everything, and also traffic summary. So now we are merging this same asset, understanding this is, so we are really getting into a lot of details from the agent and from the passive sensor. And now we bring all of this information possible into your CMDB with a two-way synchronization. So in ServiceNow, uh, basically you, uh, uh, from the App Store you enable, from the ServiceNow App Store you enable this uh, um, certified application. You plug in the API, the credentials, and then you can start syncing all of this data into your SIMDB. Yes, let's. So, so there's a transform map in ServiceNow that we have out of the box. You can use it. So we use attributes as the host name, the IP address, and you can use combination. But you can fine tune that transform map. So basically, what uh, what we do is we put everything on staging table when you first import, and then there is an approval process where you can say I approve this set of assets that look good, or you can also automate if you want to pre-approve everything. You can do that. And there's this transfer map that we have, and this is really like uh, you can fine tune this transfer map. <laughs> 